Welcome to Earthlings, a series of short videos intended to heighten appreciation of the natural world. I'm Tasman Rosenfeld, and nature is my passion. The Florida cane fields represent some of the worst of what agriculture can do to previously pristine ecosystems. As one might expect, the ecology here is unique yet also complex. In this video, we'll primarily be focusing on the herpetological fauna of the area. I'll also try to highlight some of the ways that the agricultural practices of the area affect these reptiles and amphibians. Uh, what we have here is a dusky pygmy rattlesnake, Cistrurus miliaris barbari. This species likely delivers the majority of venomous snake bites to humans in the southeastern United States. Though they will more readily bite than other venomous snakes, their hemotoxic venom is not quite as potent as an eastern diamondback, or as dangerous as the venom of a coral snake. Not growing much larger than this, the southern ringneck snake is common in both urban and rural habitats. This particular individual was found under some bark. Rough green snakes are well-camouflaged tree dwellers that are pretty hard to spot unless you see one crossing the road or illuminate one at night with a flashlight. They eat primarily small lizards and insects, and they're quite a treat to find. This is a Florida water snake. I want to see him do some striking. <laughs> As is apparent in this video, this extremely common aquatic reptilian is quite eager to strike. They primarily feed on fish and frogs. The native green tree frog is one of the most common inhabitants of the cane fields. Even more common, however, is the invasive cane toad, a species native to Central and South America that was imported into South Florida to control insect pests in the Everglades agricultural area. It is apparent, though, that they are better at controlling native herp populations than those of insects. Another quite common species is the eastern garter snake, the primary phenotype in the cane fields being blue individuals. These snakes have pretty diverse diets, ranging from fish to frogs to slugs and earthworms. Equally common, but more so in the day than night, the black racer zooms through the cane field, snatching up whatever small prey items it can get its mouth on. Yellow rat snakes like this one shown are quite abundant in the Brazilian pepper and Australian pine stands that punctuate the monotony of the cane fields. What we're looking at right now is an eastern coral snake, Micrurus fulvius. This is one of the most venomous snakes in the southeastern United States. This coral snake possesses a neurotoxic venom which instead of attacking red blood cells like a hemotoxin, attacks the nervous system. A fossorial species, the eastern coral snake is rarely seen above ground. To positively identify the snake if you think you see one, you can remember the rhyme, red touching black is a friend of Jack, red touching yellow can kill a fellow. So what we have here is a Florida cottonmouth, also called a green-tailed cottonmouth, Agkistridon, Piscivorus conanti. They're one of Florida's most common uh, wetland snakes. However, they happen to be a venomous pit viper. Frequently sighted along irrigation canal banks, the cottonmouth gets its nickname from the fact that the interior of its mouth is almost completely white, like cotton. One of the least commonly encountered inhabitants of the cane fields. The greater siren dwells in canals, and shows an affinity for those densely populated with invasive water hyacinth. This aquatic salamander possesses external gills, solely two front feet, and grows to lengths of up to three feet long. What we've come across right here is actually a Florida king snake. Rodents love sugar, and snakes love rodents, so it makes sense that there are lots of snakes in the cane fields. The Florida cane snake is no exception. More common in the cane fields than anywhere else throughout its range, this Ophiophagus, or snake-eating snake, is resistant to rattlesnake venom and will readily eat those of the right size. Prized by collectors and breeders for their beauty and temperament, you are more likely to see one of these snakes in a pet store than in the wild. In this clip, you can see a cane field's pump house in action. 
Pump houses like these control much of the flow through the canal systems of South Florida. In addition to acting as gene flow barriers to native flora and fauna, canals fed by these pump houses channel harmful agrochemicals into fragile ecosystems like Florida Bay and beaches along the Treasure Coast, causing eutrophic conditions and algae blooms that not only harm ecology, but also economy. As you watch this clip of workers harvesting sugarcane at night, I urge you to think about the interests of this industry versus the interests of South Florida's inhabitants, human and wild. A quick drive west from West Palm Beach on State Road 80 will bring you through what on the surface appears to be an ecological monopoly. Throughout this video, however, we learn that if one digs a little deeper, there is another level of life in the Everglades agricultural area. It's impressive, it truly is, but more so, it is apparent that a lot is out of balance. While some select species are thriving, it is naturally more difficult to see the ones that are dying. Due to elevated nutrient content in the water, Cattails are replacing whole marshes of sawgrass. The microbiome of the Everglades is changing completely. The native reptiles and amphibians you saw in this video belong in pristine Everglades, the habitat into which they evolved and adapted to. Thank you for watching Earthlings, the Florida Cane Fields.